what I do for them to see what is not in experience, but there is something that does not have. That's my passion. So I want to be better than what I have in the next life. <laughs> and I, I've got so many people, there is a progress in them. So I may become a guide to them again, so that they can learn what is not taught in this life. This is all my passion in this life. I think uh, I was given call, you know, that he is like a film actor in the field of yoga. So if the anger is there, people will certainly come. If there is no anger, you can't take the confidence of the person. So such impression I created that anger means story is coming. to break that to a great extent. I have taken, I invited students to participate, a raw beginner and a right practitioner. But I put them all together, so I showed the way. technical approach. How many people in this world are interested in philosophy? Honestly, actually, this is what we have to think. How can we tell them they have to take the zenith of yoga, samadhi, this or, you know, equanimity of the intelligence or oneness in the intelligence, universality of human being. It's all utopian words. I think a teacher is his ambitious. He cannot be a teacher. So if a teacher try to expect something to get from the students so and so, then the teacher is partial. I have taken this lady on the platform to show that she cannot see. But she has, God has given her a sensitive intelligence and 
you will be surprised to know that she will catch faster and probably out of all the, without the sense of, without the sense of perception, she will present far better than all the whom God has blessed them with eyes to see. The vertical ascendance of intelligence and the expansion of the horizons of intelligence should be exactly at the seat of the heart. And that's how the mind is brought to co cooperate with the physical body. Now, take the right down. To the inspiration. Take the right column down. This is known as the triangular force. You can see the, how the triangle forms. Now you can see. In the plane, it's a circular asana, not a triangular asana. Can you see this? There is no dome here. There is no dome here. There is no dome here. And if you observe, it's not a straight triangular force. Now you can understand. Do not allow the energy to go out of the skin. Now in this, the gurus were testing people who is fit even here. We call patra and apatra. Sometimes they were not getting patra students at all, right students, so the art died with them. Whether one is right or unright, it does not matter to me. What little I gain, I should part one and all, irrespective of difference in their intellectual caliber. And I have done it. If I had not done it, today millions and millions of people would not have taken to my place. You remember the first time we met? Yes, yes. In Bombay. And the many times you worked on the, <clears throat> on the uh, outside of the cat the uh, government house of Bombay. On the terrace. Yes, yeah. on the terrace, yes. Yeah. I remember that so well. And our many years in Stan. That did I forget about. Well, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. <laughs> In the early 1960s, uh, Yehudi Menon wanted to have yoga lessons in England, and so he arranged to bring his teacher from India, Mr. B.K.S. Iyengar. The first time when Mr. Iyengar uh, came, uh, we didn't have any classes. He only gave a demonstration which was arranged by the Asian Music Circle. I um, opened the paper one day and there was an article about the Stranger coming over here, or he was actually here, to teach you Hudi Menuhin. And uh, I was very interested in this article, the Daily Mail, way back in 1961. Mm -hmm. A director of the Asian Music Circle put a letter in the Daily Mail to say that uh, they were uh, arranging uh, a few classes for ordinary people uh, for the first time with Mr. Anger, and only specially selected pupils would be allowed to attend. In that first year, there were two classes a day, one in the morning, which was attended primarily by musicians, and the other in the evening uh, for the ordinary people. Today, millions and millions of people would not have taken to my practice. And not only that, it's going on the generation, whether it is India or you take in the rest. Those people who did in 1970s who were my students, 1950s who were my students, their children and grandchildren are still practicing yoga. I never taught them.
one evening Mr. Einker produced a wad of papers and said, I'm writing a book. This is the beginning of it. Now, Peter York was a reader for um, Alan Irwin, the publishers. And he said to Beatrice, do you do yoga? I'm looking for a book on yoga. Beatrice put him in touch directly with Mr. Iyengar. And for the next sort of year or two, they were in uh, correspondence until the book was finally finished. And Alan and Unwin agreed to it being published. So when you stand in Sarasana, if you observe, you can get an idea of what Sarasana is. Intelligence should be on the face, not only on the head. <laughs> that is the harmony of yoga. You have seen their poses. I need not explain. You can get how the mind has to be get intermingled in the frame of the body. The body is the frame of the mind. The mind is a photo. You can see this is known as the dog which stretches. That's why it is called swama means a dog. How the dog lifts its head with four legs, front leg. And Adhomukha Svanasana is how the dog stretches their hind leg. So the rishis having seen the various movements of the animals, the birds, they started playing with their bodies, building up the quality of those animals or birds in their system to understand the behavioral patterns of the animals with the human being. You can see my chest and their chest. <laughs> so I, my chest appears like a dog, dog's chest, and they do. <laughs> this is not dog, actual dog. One time, uh, Hepzibah Menon was at some VIP education meeting, and she started talking to a man called Peter McIntosh. And they started talking about yoga and that he would like it to be introduced into the adult education. I'm a qualified teacher. I, I qualified, obviously, and I qualified in 1992. Um, and I've been teaching yoga since then. Before that, I taught fitness, sport, but I mean, of course, my first love is teaching yoga because it's so multi-layered. I think yoga has got a very good reputation in terms of uh, training, safety, uh, structured syllabus and so because of this reputation it is attractive in an educational establishment. Yoga is also an art, though so it has got a science. Even music is an art, music has a science. Culture is an art, it has a science. So artistic side is different, scientific side is different. The difference is art is an ex experiential subject. Science in the experiment.
friends of yoga, admirers of yoga, and practitioners of yoga. Before I start on the subject of yoga, I appreciated the youngsters who presented in a group with a background music, which I think is the method to present this philosophical subject in an art forum so that people get ignited and interested to practice yoga. The spreading of Iyengar yoga in Europe is uh, mostly the credit goes to Guruji's very hard work because since many years he came regularly in Europe, he conducted classes, intensive teacher trainings, assessments, and uh, we are very happy to tell you that now in all European countries Iyengar yoga is taught, in all major countries of Europe, in all major cities, it goes from the countries like Germany, Holland, France, etc., till the remotest parts of the Siberia. I can tell that there is not any place in Europe that now we haven't certified Iyengar Yoga teachers, associations, they are coming up to promote his teaching in a correct way, because it is getting spread in a very big speed nowadays. My name is Elena, and... Um I'm from Russia. Guruji was invited to our country, and uh, it was an invitation from the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of uh, uh, Sport. After his vi visit, many people uh, were very excited about this uh, great guru. And uh, from this time, uh, many people in different uh, towns uh, began practice uh, really, really yoga, anger yoga. And um, I started uh, my serious practice, and after two years, I started to teach yoga. And in this time, I began uh, to travel a lot for different towns, for example, St. Petersburg, Yaroslavl, Sevastopol, Krasnoyarsk, Khabarov. Uh, the interest of anger yoga was very, very high, and uh, it is going li like that in nowadays. I met Guruji was in uh, 1987. It was an Iyengar yoga convention that was being held at Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts. Guruji's desire always has been to create a friendly community in, in the yoga community, in the Iyengar yoga community. And um, in 1990, it was decided that there would be the second Iyengar yoga convention would take place in Southern California. In the United States, there are now 12 or 13 regional associations. And many certified teachers teach uh, Iyengar Yoga Asana classes. My name is Sheila Dwight, and I am Director of International Education Programs at the University of California, Riverside. Today, I would like to discuss with you one particular program that we have, which is a certificate program in yoga, specifically Iyengar yoga. The curriculum of the program, in fact, was suggested by PKS Iyengar, and we think it's a very fine program and a very academically demanding program, as well as, of course, of those of you who may know Iyengar yoga, a physically demanding program. With the Iyengar yoga, and with yoga uh, specifically, one learns persistence. The postures teach this you know, to be persistent, to be uh, enduring. So the whole yoga community, in particular the Iyengar community, has really grown over these last 20 years. I think as Iyengar pointed out the other day that they were, I think in 1960 and 1970, 
uh, 79, when I first met them, they were like a community of 2,000 high younger yoga students, and now they're like 4 million. what happened to my health. But after a year or so, he realized that this is something very serious. And when he took me to some other doctor, they realized that it was nephritis and both the kidneys were damaged. To tell you frankly, in those days our financial condition was not very good. Then my father one day told me, look, this is very difficult to maintain all the time with these drugs because it's, they are heavily drugging you. You just do yoga or just forget. Forget about life. Do or die. That's what the word he used for me. And I said, no, I must now take to this practice only because this is something giving me life. And that's how I started doing yoga. Or my father is special that he is teaching and others are doing. And that's how I picked up. And um, that was the, I think, the seed of the interest, which later I realized that just looking at him, so many things we could learn. So many things we achieved, like courage, especially. For whom of the month is they keep on doing this? You, they find a change during the menstruation. This menorrhea is, is with an a menorrhagia where too much of flow is there. It's all sort of, they find the lip coming. They get rid of those problems. And those who have got problem with the menstrual cycle, which is irregular, irregular menstrual cycle, their hormonal change occurs. That's why, in a way, it is a boon for ladies. This is the course in which they find this. The thyroid tension is also lessened. I just, I explained that how the shoulder bone goes up, the throat is relaxed, so the pressure on the thyroid is lessened. And that's why whether in a hypothyroid or hyperthyroid process, though rest of the asana they have to do, this is the one which helps them a lot. Centralize the body, and though we are in a lying down position, your back ribs should not go, to a sleepy state, especially the rib region, which is below the bottom floating rib, if slightly comes upward, you find that just rejuvenating. Actually, let me tell you about Guruji one thing. Though he is a man that without having any medical background, but still very much sure about what he is doing, he can handle any problems of women. <laughs> For me it is more than white and it's not just the wood, it is more than diamond and gold because it came from the greatest musician Yogi Menin, my father's pupil. Yoga is actually good for every profession, vocation and violin can be no exception. practice yoga, whatever is my experience, although it is, it is beyond words and I could put it because of emotional touch to my language, musical touch to my language, I could articulate it. Not only can uh, violinists learn a little bit of yoga, but much better a yoga father can produce such a wonderful violin. <laughs> Healing is an art. Science is a technique. Today the market is flooded with drugs, with various pills. Do you mean to say health can be purchased through pills, by swallowing pills? Or health has to be sweated? Even health may be tamasic, health may be rajasic, health may be softy. Just using the word health has no meaning at all. 
each and every cell should be ringing with a bell that I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. I consider that as a subject, pure, illuminative health. And that yoga is The fire of yoga, if it has to be burned in the hearts of the people, people like you only can do that as I am doing. I work at the front line. Now, I want people to forget me when I am still alive. So that is why I got isolated myself.